Hi, CCC family. It's Dom Marie with Custom Comfy Crochet. And today we're going to learn how to do some really cool crochet overlay. And so this is worked in a grid, the back, and then you overlay the crochet on the top. And we're using a slip stitch overlay today. So I'm going to show you how to do this. I'm going to show you how to go back and forth like this one. And then I'm going to show you how to go um, and a swirl like this, okay? So it's really easy. I definitely think this is beginner friendly. And let's go ahead and get into the materials. I do wanna ask you first to please like, share, and subscribe. Hit the notify me bell button if you haven't. And if you like this video, please like it and share it. Share it helps, sharing it helps more than anything with your friends, family, people you know who like to crochet, crochet groups, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, things like that. That helps a whole bunch. I really appreciate it. Okay, so let's get into your materials for today. So for today, I'm, I always like to tell you what kind of yarn I'm using, but for this project, you can use any yarn that you want. I'm using a cotton um, yarn for the backing, and then I'm using um, just a variegated uh, color pulling red heart yarn for the top. I just really liked the way the colors changed. Um, but yeah, like I said, you can use anything you want. However, this is the important thing you want to remember. For the back of this, for the cotton, I used a four millimeter hook. And of course it calls for a bigger hook, but uh, you want to go smaller in your hook for the grid part of this that I'm going to show you how to do. And then you want to go bigger for the overlay. So for the overlay, I went all the way up to a six 6.5 okay so you know basically whatever your yarn calls for you want to at least go up um, a full size maybe you could do a half a size because when you go to do this overlay and this will make more sense in a minute but it tends to pull when you do it so you definitely want to keep your tension loose and you want to use a bigger hook okay so just wanted to tell you that um, and then you'll need a pair of scissors to cut off your yarn at the end of your project. And you'll need a darning needle as well to work in your ends. And I'm going to show you how to work in the ends when we get close to the end of this, okay? All right, so let's get into the tutorial. So for the tutorial, I'm just going to do a small swatch with you. You can make them as big as you want. But what you're going to do is you're going to do multiples of two, and then you're going to chain three after that. So for instance, we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen. So we've done multiples of two and now we're going to add three more. One, two, and three. And then into the third chain from your hook, you're going to put a half double crochet. Okay, then you're going to chain one, skip one, go into your next stitch and put a half double crochet and a chain one. Skip one, go into your next, put a half double crochet and chain one. Skip one, go into your next, do a half double crochet and a chain one. Skip one, go into your next, do a half double crochet and a chain one. Now I do want to say right now, if you're not familiar with, with any of the stitches that we're doing in this video, um, please look below in the description box and I have a totally beginner video for crocheters, okay? So again, you're chaining one, you're skipping one, you're going into your next stitch and you're putting a half double crochet and then you're chaining one. And then again, skip one, go into your next stitch, put a half double crochet and chain one. And you'll just keep doing this till the end. And then you should end on one half double crochet. So chain one, skip a stitch, go into the last one and put one half double crochet. And that'll tend to wanna go up on you. So just tighten it up there at the end and then you're going to chain three. You're going to turn your work. And then we're going to be doing basically the same thing, but you're going to be going on top of your previous half double crochets and doing half double crochets. So this chain three counted as a half double crochet and a chain one. So we're gonna go into the top of our next half double crochet and put a half double crochet and then chain one. 
Then in the top of the next one, do a half double crochet. Try to go into two stitches there if you can. Do a half double crochet and chain one. And then again, into the top of the previous, half double crochet and chain one. So you'll just keep doing this all the way down. Okay, and then when you get to the end here, don't forget that you had this first one here that you need to work into. So still remember to chain one, but when you get to this chain of three that we had, we want to do a half double crochet in the second chain up. So kind of turn it on its side and you can see one, two, three chains. You're gonna go into the second one and do a half double crochet. Then you're going to chain three turn your work and then you're going to start all over again so again you would the chain of three counts as a half double crochet and a chain one so you're going to go right into your next top of your previous half double crochet and do a half double crochet and then chain one and into the previous one of the next half double crochet chain one and again half double crochet and chain one. Okay, so you just keep doing that for as many rows as you want. Yours may look obviously a lot bigger than my little swatch here, but I'm gonna do a couple more rows of this so I can give you a good thing to look at here. And then I'll come back in just a minute and I'll teach you how to do that overlay. So just keep going back and forth and I'll see you in just a second. Okay, so I've done a few more rows of this swatch here for you guys. So all you're gonna do when you get to the end is just cut off and then you're going to just um, tie it in like you normally would. And then what I like to do is go ahead and work in my ends because when you're doing the overlay, you don't want to get these ends confused with your work. So I'm just gonna go ahead and work these in here. Remember the rule of three. So one, two, three, and remember, if the three does not feel good to you, you can go back in and do more. Cotton is kind of hard to work with, so I'll do one more. And then I will cut off, and then I will work in my other end. And again, the rule of three. Or when you're working with cotton, the rule of four and five. <laughs> okay. And I'm gonna cut that off. And then you're gonna pull in your other yarn that you're gonna go ahead and pull in this Red Heart Color pulling yarn. And I'm going to go ahead and make a slip knot. We're gonna use our bigger hook now, the 6.5 millimeter hook. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that we're working under our work. So we wanna make sure that um, we're coming in from underneath and not on top. And that's what's really important about this um, stitch so I'm going to come right in here. It's kind of hard to see this first stitch that you do, but you do want to work into it. So I'm going to take my hook and kind of spread it out there. And then I'm going to come right from below it like this and pull it up through. So then my yarn stays on the back of the project, okay? 
And so then I'm gonna hold my yarn, just like I normally would, but I'm gonna hold it underneath it. And then this will be on the top, okay? And that way we can catch our yarn under. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go right into my next space I'm gonna pull the yarn from the back and pull it through the loop right there and do a slip stitch. And again, pull through. So I'm catching the yarn from behind my work. Again, go into your next space, pull through, into the next, pull through. And I'm keeping my work nice and loose, my tension very loose, and using this big hook so that it won't grab okay, and pull at the project. So again, pulling up from the back, and it's usually pretty easy to pull it up. Maybe sometimes it might be hard, but again, I'm just pulling up through. And then when I want to go up to the next one, I'm just gonna turn my work where it's facing me this way, okay? And then I'm going to go right into this next space, pull up a loop, pull through, and then turn it back going this way. So we're going back and forth just like this. And I'm just pulling this up and through my loop, making sure that my yarn stays at the back of my work. And now you can see why it's important to work in your ends because they can just be flying everywhere. Okay, again, we're at a turn here. So I'm gonna go into my next one, pull up, turn again, where it's facing this way, pull up. Again, I'm keeping my tension nice and loose. Just like this. Okay, and that's what it looks like. And you just keep doing that back and forth all the way to the end. Now I do wanna show you if you wanted, you could do any pattern you wanted to with this. Um, you could go up this way, you could do an X. I mean, you could just, you know, do anything you want to. But I do wanna show you real quick if you wanted to keep going around. So I started off over here and I came down to the end. So instead of coming up and going this way, I would just keep going straight up like this, straight up the side. And then you would just keep working it into a square. So you would go all the way to the top. And then you would turn up here at the top like this and just keep working like that. And the hardest thing about this really is making sure that you keep your yarn at the back of the work. Um, that's, and really how to, you know, hold, getting used to how to hold the yarn from behind and your other from the front. That's the hardest part of this, but don't give up. You will get the hang of it. Just keep trying. Um, and if your tension is too tight, just undo it and try again. This is really fun and really easy. Makes beautiful placemats. Um, dish towels, kitchen towels. It's really nice and sturdy and lovely, but really you could make anything with this, okay? And so now we're here. Another thing you wanna watch out for is that you're not working down into the place you've already worked. So make sure you're working on the top here, working in the row you should be working on. And so if I'm doing my little square and I'm going around, then I would go here. And then when I got down here, I'd go up, Go over, go down, go up, over, down, just like that. And you would just keep working it all the way around until you ended right in the middle, okay? So I wanna show you real quick how to close this off. I've got one here that's almost all the way done. So I'm gonna work this down to the end, and then I'm gonna show you how to close off and work in your yarn. So I'll be back in just a second. Okay, so we're on our last one, and I wanna show you what that looks like real quick. So the last space right here, we're gonna pull through. And then instead of like going like this and pulling through to close, you're simply just gonna literally pull it through, tighten up, and then we're gonna put this onto our darning needle. Okay. 
and then you're going to push it through the same hole that you just worked into. And then you're gonna work this in in the back through the colors here. So I'm just gonna go, because you don't wanna get it into the white, but you could work into the back of the white if you wanted to so it wouldn't show, just like that. Just don't want it to go up to the front of your work so it messes it up, okay? You don't wanna mess that up. So I'm just gonna keep working this through the back there and then you can cut off. And then you have some beautiful crochet overlay. Like I said, this is really easy, lots of fun to do. Really great if you wanna use your imagination and come up with different patterns, using different yarns and colors. I think it would be really cool to use like a black yarn and some neon in the front. And I've started with some darker yarn I just wanted to show you. And you see how the darker yarn really makes the color pop out. So I think that's really neat to do as well, okay? So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have um, any questions or you need any help, don't hesitate to ask. You can ask me below in the YouTube section, um, comment section, but if you're not comfortable with that, then you can find me on, um, I have a Gmail, you can find me on Facebook, you can find me on Instagram. Um, and I have a TikTok. And by the way, go find all of those and give me a friendly follow. I sure appreciate it. And I'll see you soon, guys. Happy crocheting. Bye-bye.